Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. I'm Priscilla. I'm the owner of A Life Full of Simplicity. So today is another um, magical page turner video. This is my second episode. It will be my June wrap up as well as my July TBR. So uh, if you've seen my last video, I will link it in the cards. That way you can go watch it if you'd like. I had a very ambitious TBR for June. Did I get through it all? No. <laughs> Obviously not. Obviously not. Uh, I was able to read uh, seven books. So I did finish seven books, which was better than May because in May I finished five. So I was actually uh, pretty impressed with myself. Did I get to my goal of 10? No, but that's okay. It doesn't even matter to me. So I did also make changes uh, to my TBR. Um, I received a comment on my last video about the uh, a house on the Cerulean Sea. Um, I was told that it actually is based on residential schools. So I was like, hmm, no thanks. So I removed it and I'm not going to be reading anything from that author. Actually, I decided, you know what, if that's the kind of material that you get inspired from, no thank you. So blacklisted for me. Um, and also I did make a mistake in my last video uh, in regards to Split Tooth. Um, I mixed up the synopsis with another uh, book that I also want to read that's also an indigenous book. Uh, so I did mix up the synopsis, which I'm sure if you've seen that video, I did correct with some text. Um, so I have my laptop here. I have everything open <laughs> of what I read and what I will be reading. So that way I can actually read the correct synopsis and we don't have mistakes again. We've got to learn from the first time, right? So for June, uh, the first book that I read was Plain Bad Heroines. It was actually one that I started in May, but I ended up finishing it in June. I did give it uh, give it five stars. Uh, it was fantastic. Absolutely loved it. Definitely recommend if you like, uh, if you're looking for a good horror, thriller, sapphic novel, loved it. Beautiful. So I'm just going to go ahead and read the synopsis. That way you can get a feel of what it is. Also, as always, I will have all the books um, from Goodreads. I will have them all linked down below if you'd like to check it out for yourself. So Plain Bad Heroines is by Emily M. Danforth. And the synopsis on Goodreads states the following. Our story begins in 1902 at the Brook Haunts School for Girls. Flo and Clara, our two impressionable students, are obsessed with each other and with a daring young writer named Mary McLean, the author of a scandalous best-selling memoir. To show their devotion to Mary, the girls establish their own private club and call it the Plain Bad Heroine Society. They meet in secret in a nearby apple orchard the setting of their wildest happiness, and ultimately their macrobe death. This is where their bodies are later discovered with a copy of Mary's book splayed beside them, the victims of a swarm of stinging angry yellow jackets. And for those, yellow jackets are wasps. So in, in certain places in the U.S., uh, they call them something different. So they're wasps, just to let you know. Uh, less than five years later, the Brook Haunts School for Girls closes its doors forever, but not before three more people mysteriously die on the property, each in the most troubling way. Over a century later, the now abandoned and crumbling Brook Haunts is back in the news when Wonder Kid writer Merritt Emmons publishes a breakout book celebrating the queer feminist history surrounding the haunted and cursed Gilded Age institution. Her best-selling book inspires a controversial horror film adaption starring celebrity actor and lesbian It Girl Harper Harper playing the ill-fated heroine Flo opposite B-list actress and former child, uh, child star Audrey Wells as Clara. But as Burkhans opens its gates once again and our three modern heroines arrive on set to begin, begin filming, past and present become grimly entangled or perhaps just grimly exploited. And soon it's impossible to tell where the curse leaves off and Hollywood begins. The last line states, it's a story within a story within a story. And it's literally Inception in that book. It's literally from the past to the present to another older story of how everything began. So it's like constantly. So you're going back and forth between times. But I loved it. It was so well written. The author did a fantastic job with how it was written and also the fact that she also addresses the reader throughout the book in the actual text is amazing. She uses footnotes that are actually really interesting. I've never in a fictional book seen an author use footnotes before. 
I thought that was fantastic. And it, it really kept me engaged throughout the entire book. I absolutely loved it. It is a lengthy book. It's like 700 pages, I believe. 640. Close enough. And but I was like into it the whole time. So I did give it five out of five stars. It definitely de deserves the f deserves more than that, honestly. Ten deserves ten. Um, but it was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. Highly recommend if you're looking for a thriller, a horror uh, book, but that has that sapphic uh, feel in it because the, it is a lesbian novel, which I absolutely love for Pride Month. Fantastic. Loved it so much. So the next book that I read was definitely a different feel. Um, still in the genre of uh, thriller and horror, though. But it was the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. Now, I listened to this on audiobook. Um, and wow, five out of five stars again, because it was absolutely amazing. The audio, whoever narrates the audiobook, she's fantastic. Like, the, the story that she brings just with her voice is like, I was engaged the whole time. The whole time. Now, the synopsis of this is, let's see. Um, okay, so Patricia Campbell had always planned for a big life, but after giving up her career as a nurse to marry an ambitious doctor and become a mother, Patricia's life has never felt smaller. The days are long, her kids are ungrateful, her husband is distant, and her to-do list is never really done. The one thing she has to look forward to is her book club. A group of Charleston mothers united only by their love for true crime and suspense, uh, suspenseful fiction. In these meetings, they're more likely to discuss the FBI's recent siege of Waco as much as ups and downs of marriage and motherhood. When an artistic and sensitive stranger moves into the neighborhood, the book club's meetings turn into speculation about the newcomer. Patricia is initially attracted to him, but when some local children go missing, she starts to suspect the newcomer is involved. She begins her own investigation, assuming that he's a Jeffrey Dahmer or Ted Bundy. What she uncovers is far more terrifying, and soon she and her book club are the only people standing between the monster, monster they invited into their homes and their unsuspected community. So this does take place in the 90s. Uh, it's set in the 90s, and it's really about these stay-at-home moms. So these women that are literally stay-at-home, their husbands are... The breadwinners really the feel of the book I know it's set in the 90s but the feel of the book feels like it's 50s style because the women are really at home they take care of the children they're the ones that take care of the home and whatnot so I did feel that sense of very 50s you know you're my wife you need to stay at home kind of thing or you're my wife and I control you type of thing also um but I really enjoyed it it was really really good and some of the parts in the book were really screwed up <laughs> There was one particular part, it doesn't give, like, it's not a spoiler or anything, there's a scene with rats, and listening to that, believe me, I, I, my, I was, like, covered in goosebumps, because I was like, oh my god, that's disgusting, it really creeped me out, and that's why I gave it five out of five stars, because the experience of listening to the book is not always the same experience when you read it yourself, right? Because usually when you listen to the book, if someone else is reading it to, to you, you feel more, you know, goosebumps, you feel like the chills or like your heart palpitating and stuff like that, because someone else is reading it to you, like as if you're watching a movie, but you're really listening to it. So that's how I felt when I was like listening to this book and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I do know that he has some other books. So I do want to uh, read those as well. So the next book that I read was a graphic novel. It was Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Oseman. And uh, I've actually, uh, I, it's, I haven't read a graphic novel since I was a child. So this was actually the first time in a very long time that I actually picked up a graphic novel. It was a, I read it as an ebook and I really enjoyed it. it I gave it five, I, five out of five stars. Honestly, uh, this uh, for this past month, all the books that I read were five out of five stars. I, I love them all. And I just, I really enjoyed it. Like the artistry and then the, the topic of conversation between the, the characters just was really, really nice. Um, I did cry a lot throughout all four of, of the books because I did read all four of the graphic novels. So the synopsis of the, um, 
First one is Charlie, a highly strung, openly gay overthinker, and Nick, a cheerful, soft-hearted rugby, uh, rugby player, meet at a British all-boys grammar school. Friendship blooms quickly, but could there be something more? So Charlie Spring is a year 10 at Truman Grammar School for Boys. The past year hasn't been too great, uh, but at least he's not being bullied anymore. Nick Nelson is in year 11 and on the school rugby team. He's heard a little bit about Charlie, the kid who was outed last year and bullied for a few months, but he's never had the opportunity to talk to him. They quickly become friends and soon Charlie is falling hard for Nick, even though he doesn't think he has a chance. But love works in surprising ways and sometimes good things are waiting just around the corner. So the, um, the dynamic between the two characters, Charlie and Nick, was just really really beautiful and the the way it was built over time in that in that first volume was really nice and i did i did get emotional uh between them because it was really nice and the fact you know the charlie was bullied and whatnot and just like the um, the story dynamic was really interesting like i really loved it i loved it a lot so i definitely recommend um, this particular series, if you're looking for a good graphic novel series, this particular series is absolutely beautiful. So the next one I read was the second volume. Um, and for the second volume, it says Nick and Charlie are best friends. Nick knows Charlie's gay and Charlie is sure that Nick isn't. But love works in surprising ways, and Nick is discovering all kinds of things about his friends, his family, and himself. So this particular volume is about really exploring your sexual identity, and I really enjoyed how the author did that in this particular book. So I was really, again, it was very emotional. I did have, you know, I did cry a bit while I was uh, reading this particular um, volume, and I just really enjoyed it a lot. Again, I gave it five out of five stars. Then I read the third volume, <laughs> and the third volume does have um, <clears throat> uh, a few triggers, um, trigger warnings for eating disorders. So just to put that out there, just to let you know. And again, I really did love um, this book as well, and I did give it five out of five stars. So the synopsis says, in this volume, we'll see the Heartstopper gang go on a school trip to Paris. And not only are Nick and Charlie navigating a new city, but also telling more people about their relationship and learning more about the challenges each other are facing in private. Meanwhile, uh, Tao and Elle will face their feelings for each other. Ta uh, Tara and Darcy share more about their relationship origin story and the teachers supervising the tri trip seem rather close. So this particular book actually explores other characters that come into the, the series, you know, um, after the first and second books, more people come into the series, like other characters. So this book in particular explores not only the two main characters, but also the secondary characters as well and their relationships as well. So I really actually, I really enjoyed this book as well. I thought it was fantastic and them going to Paris was fun because <laughs> they went to the museums and stuff. So I was just like, yeah, because that's what I want to do. One day I want to go to Paris and go to the museums too. So I thought it was fun. Five out of five stars again. And then... I read the last Heartstopper volume that is available. I believe that I've heard anyway that uh, she'll be writing uh, the fifth and final volume, I believe, is what I've heard. Not sure if that's correct. Um, can always, uh, you know, let me know in the comments if that's not correct or what. Uh, but that's what I've heard from other people. So again, five out of five stars. Uh, this one's actually really heavy in trigger warnings for eating disorders as well as mental health. Um, and again, still exploration of um, sexual identity, which is the same for the other one, but that's not really a trigger warning unless people find that a trigger warning. I don't really find that as a trigger warning, but just to let you know, there's that topic in there. But the trigger warnings are really for eating disorders and mental health. And this one was the one that made me cry the most. Uh, I really, really, really loved it. It was actually so beautiful. So uh, the synopsis is really just Nick's journal. I think I'm in love with Charlie this summer with him and our friend have been amazing. And I want to say I love you, but I guess I've had other things to worry about lately. So I guess it's na again navigating. It was really navigating the relationship again. And also, you know, with the mental health uh, talk and uh, eating disorders as well. So yeah, five out of five stars, really emotional. I really, really, really enjoyed it. And my god, Alice Oseman, fantastic, fantastic. Now, the last book that I read was Split Tooth by Tanya Tagak. It is um, an indigenous, Inuit indigenous uh, novel. 
and it is written in I think prose yeah I think it's written in prose um the way it's structured anyway it, it feels like prose or poetry um I listened to it on audiobook and I highly recommend if you want to read this book do it on audio because wow um, in between each section, she does, um, she actually performs some Inuit throat singing. And I was, honestly, I wanted to give this book 10 out of 10 stars because the experience with the audiobook was just absolutely fantastic. I was into it. I was deep into it. The, the subject matter was so raw and deep. And it's the author that reads the audiobook, which is even better because I, I love, like, I absolutely love that. I love that. And yeah I just I enjoyed it so much it was so fantastic and I'm just gonna read the um the synopsis here uh so it says from the internationally acclaimed Inuit throat singer who has dazzled and throughout the world with music it had never heard before a fierce tender heartbreaking story unlock anything that you've ever read it was a very powerful story I'm gonna tell you right now very powerful story I absolutely loved it oh <sighs> So fact can be as strange as fiction. It can be as dark, as violent, as rapturous. In the end, there may no, uh, there may be no difference between them. So a girl grows up in Inu, uh, Nunavut in the 1970s. She knows joy and friendship and parents' love. She knows boredom and listlessness and bullying. She knows the tendom of the everyday world, the raw amoral power of the ice and sky, the seductive energy of the animal world, she knows the ravages of alcohol and violence at the hands of those she should be able to trust. She should be able to trust. Um, she sees the spirits that surround her and the immense power that dwarves all of us. When she becomes pregnant, she must navigate all of this. Veering back and forth between the gritty, uh, gritty, uh, grittiest features of a small Arctic town, the electric, uh, electrifying proximity of the world of the animals and ravishing world of myth, Tanya Tagak explores a world where the distinctions between good and evil, animal and human, victim and transgressor, real and imagined, lose their, uh, lose their meaning, but the guiding power of love remains. And then it says, haunting, brooding, exhilarating, and tender all at once, Tagak moves effortlessly between fiction and memoir, myth and reality, poetry and prose, and conjures a world and a heroine readers will never forget. And honestly, that's exactly what she did. It was absolutely amazing. A absolutely amazing. Um, the book, like listening to the book was really empowering. And also I just to let you know, trigger warnings for sexual assault, rape, well, sexual assault, rape, um, uh, mentions of residential school, um, uh, intergenerational trauma as well. And yeah, there was also bullying, like it said in the, in the, um, synopsis, as well as drug use, alcohol use. Uh, in case people feel uncomfortable with those things, just to let you know. But it was really deep and really raw and felt really real. And with everything that's going on, especially now in Canada, with the residential school system um, and the unearthing of, you know, all those children, the remains of the children, it's just, it's a great time to really educate yourself on the residential school system. And I am very familiar with um, the residential school system and how much harm it has done to people. I do have a degree in social service. I literally just graduated with my degree in social service. And uh, the topic of indigenous peoples has been a really big thing in my program. So I have studied it a lot. I wrote papers on the residential school system, discrimination against indigenous peoples that are still going on today. Um, so yeah, you know, um, so reading things like this just puts it more at face value and definitely it gives a better understanding of what people are going through and what we as white people need to understand and we need to educate ourselves in terms of that as well. So I definitely want to read more uh, books that are nonfiction. I have been looking. Um, there uh, are some recommendations on Goodreads and I ha have added a bunch on my list that I can read as well to even educate myself further. And also I've uh, followed a few accounts on Instagram that caters specifically to uh, indigenous books so i will leave actually those links down below um those accounts so if anyone wants to go follow um read up on more indigenous 
uh, culture and indigenous books. I'll leave those down below so you can definitely give them a follow. I actually love those accounts. They're great and great for updating on what's going on, uh, especially specifically in Canada. Um, I do. I knew one of them, I think, does updates on other things like uh, other countries like U.S., I think also, but specifically Canada. So I'll definitely be adding those in. So um, moving on to what I'm going to be reading in July, I'm actually not going to be reading too much. Uh, my TBR is very minimal um, if I even get through these really. So let me just open up here. So my main focus for July is to finish uh, Waking the Witch, uh, Reflection on Women, Magic and Power by Pam Grossman. So I did start this in May and I haven't finished it yet. And I want to do a dedicated video specific to this book. So I'm definitely going to focus on that. That's going to be my main focus for the month. Um, that way I can make that video and get it up. So I'm just going to read the synopsis of this. Um, so it states, when you think of a witch, what do you picture? Pointy black hat, maybe a broomstick. But witches in various guises have been with us for millennia. In Waking the Witch, Pam Grossman explores the impact of the world's most magical icon, from the idea of the femme fatale in league with the devil to bewitching pop culture um, archetypes in Sabrina the Teenage Witch and Harry Potter. From the spooky ladies and fairy tales to the rise of contemporary witchcraft, witches relate to the power and potential of women. Part cultural analysis, part memoir, Waking the Witch traces the author's own journey on the path to witchcraft and how this has helped her to find self-empowerment and purpose. It celebrates witches past, present, and future and reveals the critical role that have played and will continue to play. Uh, will continue to play, sorry, in the world as we know it. So I definitely want to finish this. So far, it's really good. I'm really enjoying it. And for those of you who don't know, Pam Grossman is the host of the Witch Wave podcast. That's actually one of my favorite podcasts uh, for witchy type things. She does do interviews with specific people from this type of community. So she will interview different witches, tarot readers, um, you know, a bunch of influential people from this community that have written books and, you know, have been practicing for years uh, to talk about their craft as well as give advice, you know, on getting into that type of craft, whatever it may be. So if you're interested, I'll definitely link uh, that down below as well. I believe she has a website, so I'll link that down below. I'm sure there's a link on the website to get to the podcast. You should be able to find it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or something. So yes, so that will be my main focus. Then I have, you know, I'm not going to read the synopsis for the for the next two because I'm sure everyone knows these books already, you know. <laughs> They're popular. They were popular anyway. Uh, Breaking Dawn, which is the fourth Twilight book. Um, I started the audio, but then I had to return it. I couldn't renew it. So I got it back uh, yesterday. So I'm going to be finishing that. I have to finish that, listening to that. And then Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, which is the fifth Harry Potter book. So those two I'll also be reading. Then uh, if I can and if I have time, uh, I'll eventually get to... Um, Maybe, maybe, who knows? Maybe I'll switch it up and read something different. Maybe another nonfiction book or something. Um, I was thinking of starting The uh, Touch of Darkness, which is a Hades and Persephone re retelling. Uh, and I wanted to buddy read this with a friend of mine. Um, so just to read the synopsis of this, uh, Persephone is a goddess of, uh, is the goddess of spring by title only. Uh, the truth is she was a little flower girl. Flowers have shriveled at her touch. After moving to New England, uh, new Athens, she hopes to lead an unassuming life disguised as a mortal journalist. Hades, god of the dead, has built a gambling empire in the mortal world, and his favorite bets are rumored to be impossible. After a chance encounter with Hades, per Persephone finds herself in a contract with the god of the dead, and the terms are impossible. Persephone must create life in the underworld or lose her freedom forever. The bet does more than expose Persephone's failure as a goddess, however, um, as she struggles to sow the seeds of her freedom, love for the God of the Dead grows, and it's forbidden. So, if you don't know the original story of Hades and Persephone, it's not actually a very nice one. <laughs> it's really, she's a child, and Hades saw her and kidnapped her, and his brother Zeus helped him. <laughs> and, you know, he brings her to the underworld, rapes her, and gives her pomegranates which seals her faith in the underworld and then her mother Demeter if you don't know is also a goddess she is the goddess of cycles and brings the harvest and really um her sorrow uh, for her daughter being kidnapped uh created the seasons so uh 
yeah and then to she wanted her daughter back but because she ate pomegranate in the underworld she was not able to come back up but Demeter made um, a contract or a plan or I don't really know the word thinking of the word she made a deal that's what the word I was looking for she made a deal with Hades and Persephone is allowed back up on uh, back up from the underworld for uh, spring and summer where she stays with Demeter and then she goes back to the underworld for fall and winter so this is how the harvest this is the season of the harvest in Greek mythology anyway this is how the season of the harvest uh, was created because previously they had always harvest and things were always growing and beautiful and nice but things die when Persephone goes back to the underworld which creates the fall winter cycles where you can't grow stuff uh, it's really interesting. I do have an ancient history degree, so it's very interesting, the actual mythology, but the mythology is never nice. It's always filled with nasty stuff, and the gods are not nice people to, <laughs> portrayed in these in these mythologies. So it's an interesting retelling of the story, so I'm interested to actually read it, and a friend of mine um, wants to read it as well, so I was thinking of Buddy reading it with her. But we'll see if I even get to that, as I said. I may change my mind and pick up some other uh, nonfiction books. I have gotten a few ebooks recently on tarot and witchcraft and astrology and also the goddess Hecate. So I do want to read more of those kind of things. So we'll see how things go just so I can get into my practice a little bit more, my own spiritual practice. So we'll see how things go and if I get to uh, these books. But Waking the Witch is the book that I want to for sure finish this month. It's the one that I really want to focus on. So just to let you know that. And I'd love to know uh, what you guys are reading in the comments below. If you want to share, uh, please do. I love having conversations with any of you. Uh, I did appreciate all the comments on my last video. So again, don't hesitate to tell me things. If there's anything I said that's incorrect or wrong, feel free to correct me. Honestly, I don't take offense at all uh, when people do that. I appreciate correct information and I appreciate uh, people uh, taking the time to actually do that. Um, educating others is a nice thing, in my opinion, to do. And, you know, not everyone knows everything. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Turn on that bell so you can be notified when I post a brand new video. I do tarot and oracle unboxings. I do weekly tarot readings every Sunday. Um, I post these videos. And, of course, I'll be posting uh, some individual book reviews um, as soon as I finish uh, some books that I actually want to review. But these will be specific to, you know, uh, the witchcraft community and um, Wiccan pagan witchcraft practices. Just to let you know, uh, I did want to let you know that. In case that's something you're not interested in, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and don't forget to give this uh, video a thumbs up. as It's greatly appreciated. It helps me a lot in the long run. And I do thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a great day. Mm -hmm.